All right. Um, here's the model on the screen. This was sent to me by a, uh, uh, a subscriber, and he was trying to blend something similar to this with these intersecting tubes. And he had a rolling ball fillet essentially going through, and he wasn't happy with the, uh, the pinching that was happening uh, in this area. And if you've ever modeled this, you know that these are uh, or can be very difficult. This one is sort of an, uh, a fringe curve, uh, a fringe case, because you can, in this case, uh, blend this edge with a small radius. Um, so this is basically that rolling ball fillet. But if we change that to distance between rails, and if we uh, change that to a small radius, you'll see that this will actually do a pretty good job. Um, I have trim and join set to no, so we can see the result. Um, but this radius is now much, much smaller um, than what it was in the example that he sent me. So if I delete this, show, um, it's gone, blend edge, select that, change that to rolling ball. So he was, I can't remember what the exact radius was, but it was somewhere around this 10 millimeters. Uh, but he was trying to create a blend that would have these parallel surfaces. Now, why is that not working? You can see the pinching here, and that's because the angle between the surfaces basically goes down to zero or, or close to zero. If we change this to uh, distance between rails, you see this doesn't look good. This is, gets really flattened out because it goes over the apex of the first tube. And here you start to see like really weird stuff happening. And the reason this is happening is because when this curve is offset, uh, it's self-intersecting at some point. And the larger we make this, at some point, you know, this, this will get worse and worse and worse until it completely fails. So let's escape out of that. So let's see. So because we get we get this self-intersecting geometry as we're trying to offset these rails it's not an ideal uh setup it's not an ideal ideal geometry to blend as it you know and because it's not an ideal geometry to blend it's very difficult to get a perfect result but we're going to model it and see uh how close we can get so first uh, i'm going to dupe duplicate this border well actually let me first start by splitting this up we can build this as um, one half. So we're going to split that with this. And we can get rid of that. Get rid of that too. So now we're going to duplicate this edge. And our goal is to get a uh, a blend with roughly a 10 millimeter radius. So if I pipe this. Select that curve, set the radius to 10, enter. You can see that this is intersecting. And if I do a quick intersect between this and, and that, if I delete that, you can see that this is intersecting and it's, it's causing uh, a problem. So we're going to have to do something about that. Now, the, the, good, the good thing is, is that we have this curve here already uh, and this this radius here is basically a little bit too small so if we open up this radius we should be able to offset this um, and make it work so let's delete that um, now i'm going to first extract an iso curve from this surface and i want the middle okay Isolate that, go to the front view. I want to blend this together with a radius. We're shooting for 10. So I'm going to put roughly a circle in here that's a little bit bigger. Uh, let's say a radius of 12. Enter. And now I'm going to trim this back with this guy. Okay. So now we're going to blend this and that. And even though we're shooting for curvature, we want this to resemble basically an arc. Uh, and it, it, w it won't be a perfect arc, but we can get it close if we pull this back and kind of get 
these to be relatively uh, equal. Um, a little bit more. Okay. So now that we have that, let's join that. I'm going to rebuild this. Do that. Rebuild that. Um, degree three. And I want to be about 100 away. So 20 is good. This just gives me a really equal uh, control point spacing for my pipe. So let's pipe that again. Select this. Start radius of. Uh, I don't want it capped. So none. Yes, yes, yes. So now, because we blend this together with a larger radius, we got rid of that self intersecting uh, feature here. So let's bring back our other surfaces. Um, make sure that the seam is not intersecting with what we're trying to trim, which it isn't. So this should trim. Uh, let's trim that back. This is my cutting surface. And I want to get rid of that inside surfaces. Okay. Accept that. And so now we're in pretty good shape to blend this together. Um, it actually will go pretty fast. And don't, don't be uh, fooled. The, I'm going to use X-Nerve to blend this together, which will make it seem really easy. Um, but because this input geometry is less than ideal, um, I'll also show you what the native Rhino uh, tools will, will, um, will give us back. And they're not nearly as good as, uh, as the result you would get with, uh, with X-Nerves. So let's blend that together. Uh, we can just accept curvature. Blend that, accept that. Now we're going to extrude these two guys just a small distance. And so now we're set up. I actually don't need this. There was another method I tried that didn't work out as well. I think this is the cleanest result. It's not perfect. And the reason it's not perfect is because the input geometry is, uh, you know, less than perfect, but we're getting it. We're going to get a pretty good result. So let's throw some zebra stripes on there um, before we start using X nerves. X nerves, we're going to start with tangent. We want it to be tangent to this surface edge, tangent to that surface edge. And then for this guy, we want curvature. And for that guy, we also want curvature. Turn on preview, optimize for quad, zebra preview. We can already see that we've got a pretty good result. Now where it falls apart a little bit is here. And the reason for that is that this large radius curve goes over the apex here. And it's just really difficult for the surface to find out what you know, the, the right tangency slash curvature is. But this, to me, already looks pretty good. Um, now for the options, uh, G0 position is set at the file tolerance, G1 position, this is 0 0.04 degrees, and I think this is 0 0.1. Um, if I bump this down, you'll just increase the uh, complexity of the surface, which is unnecessary. I think 0 0.1 is, is plenty fine. Uh, as I've mentioned in my other video, this I don't see a lot of change typically. And these, the UV flow really uh, only matters if you have uh, surfaces that are not bound by, by four edges. Um, and then, you know, this is the one that influences the most. And I've found that the closest to a perfect result in, in this type of scenario is when you're either at this setting uh, you know, and you, we have a little bit of a wobble here, um, but it's looking pretty good. Or this, you know, and, and we have these sort of like small wobbles going through here. And I, you know, there's, there's no easy way to correct that, uh, especially given that we're starting with less than ideal uh, input geometry. But I'm just going to view this. I think the second from the, from the top actually results. Uh, in the best surface in, in this particular case. So we're going to accept that. Okay. And now we can get rid of these guys. Get rid of top view. Mirror those over the x-axis. Go to my layers. Change object layer. 
And so now you can see that with just a few um, with just a few clicks, we've got a really smooth blend that even though it's not 100% perfect at this edge here, and that's you know primarily because we just started with input geometry that is less than ideal, and that's, you saw that when I did the, um, uh, the blend edge with distance between rails, it fell apart both in this area and in this area. And, but by, by creating a curve through here that's a little smoother, we can get a result that is really, really quite nice. So knowing that we started with less than ideal input geometry, you know, one of the tools from Rhino that you can do for four-sided blends is the network surface command. Um, so let's do that. We select the four edges that we have, same as with XNURBS, and we can just accept tangent because we're mirroring over the center line here. Tangency should be enough for A. For B, we want curvature. For C, we want uh, tangency again, and for D, we want curvature. So let's accept that result. Now looking at this, that actually doesn't look too bad, right? But if you put a zebra map on this, you can see that we have a lot more undulations in this surface and wobbles uh, versus this side that was generated by uh, XNURBS. And I actually think that this is the best result from Rhino with just a few clicks. Now there is obviously, you can build support, additional support geometry. You can start out with that simpler surface and do control point modeling. But just from an automated tool, I would say this one's much better than what Network Serve uh, created. And if we do blend serve from this edge to that edge, we would match it afterwards. So this is the basic input that we would get. And again, like, doesn't look awful at first glance. So let's accept that. It's actually matching these curves because we accepted the default settings. And here again, we can see that the zebra looks you know, pretty, pretty awful. Now you can add stuff in here, but um, without going into a whole bunch of testing and, and trying to do that, um, I can already tell you, I looked at it quickly and I wasn't able to get a very big improvement. So again, like the, the blend serve, not as good as the uh, uh, XNURBS. And then finally, you can do sweep two. Um, and I actually think, I don't know why this is, but this actually doesn't create a, uh, a good result at all. We accept that, and we want curvature on both of these. It really dips in, um, and I'm not sure why that is, because this is essentially a flat surface. It's tapered, um, so I would expect this to go out further, uh, but it doesn't. So it, this would not be an acceptable solution, obviously. Uh, Go back, mirror that back over the x-axis, 3D view. Um, so there you have it. Um, this is how I would go about modeling this um, with one service. There's other ways to do this. Uh, this is just one method. But if you get this uh, intersecting curves between the two intersecting pipes and you open up that that curve here at the apex, so you give it a space, loop around this edge and loop around that edge, you can get uh, a very acceptable, uh, close to perfect result with X nerves in just a few clicks. All right, hope this was helpful. And as always, happy modeling.